What exactly are you doing? Um, yeah, we're very excited about the, the announcement. We essentially further vertically integrating the company and going to provide um, actual panel manufacturing. Now, the key thing about panel manufacturing is you have to get a technology that you can scale to be cost competitive. And the technology we chose is high efficiency at a low cost. With a high efficiency at a low cost, eventually you'll be able to install solar at a lower cost than fossil fuel without any incentives. All right, but having said that, Lyndon, I'm just wondering if you can describe the manufacturing deal that you've put in place. You're going to be making these solar panels in China. Why in China? No, 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 that's not correct. We're going to be, making, uh, we're going to be manufacturing the uh, facility uh, currently planned in uh, New York. In New York? But I thought that uh, the company that you're acquiring doesn't have production facilities in uh, Hangzhou, China. Yeah, yeah, it has, it has a small facility. It has a 32 megawatt facility in, in China. The facility that we're planning on building out, the initial facility is a gigawatt facility, which will make it one of the largest in the world. Um, and then that's, that's uh, slated for New York. Um, beyond that, we are we're going to be building out more capacity, you know, in the tens of gigawatt size. Um, and that's also still planned for, for the U.S. But, Lyndon, why would you be building these facilities in the United States when they already exist? Large-scale solar manufacturers already are producing these panels for lo less cost than you can make them new. No, that's not correct. Th um, we'll be able to make high-efficient modules at a price at or below the standard efficiency modules uh, in, in the U.S. So the key thing is to know that we, our energy cost is lower. Um, we, we have high automation, so the labor component is not as big a requirement. And then you don't have any transportation cost. There's massive working inventory uh, from getting it from China to the U.S. Um, we don't have that cost. So you're so, going to be doing uh, this for what, less than 36, uh, 36 cents uh, per kilowatt? So, so our focus is going to be on the installed cost per watt. And combined with our operational efficiency, our mounting hardware, so you've you got to look at the entire value chain. So combined with the entire value chain that we, we've uh, incorporated so far, um, uh, we think we'll have the lowest cost per installed kilowatt hour in the world. So then that means that you would then buy less of the current panels from your existing suppliers because you'll be building them in the United States. Oh, we, we're definitely going to be building them in the United States. Um, but if you look at our growth curve, our own uh, manufacturing capacity won't be able to keep up with our initial growth curve. So our relationship with our existing partners will actually expand. We're going to end up buying more product for them uh, than we have in the past. What's the current estimate for the price tag for this manufacturing uh, facility and this acquisition? So the acquisition itself was uh, roughly 200 million initially, 166 or so uh, in, in stock and about uh, 34 in cash and assumed liabilities. Then there's an earn-out component. That earn-out component is another 150 million based on cost and volume targets. So together, if the earn -out's achieved, it's 350 million. And then where does the additional money come from in order to actually build these manufacturing facilities in the U.S.? Yes, so we, we will um, look at partnerships, as a state helping to, to support that, that growth. Um, but we'll also have to raise additional capital, either through a convert or some sort of financing. And uh, is that something that you would do as a part of Solar City, or would that be a separate manufacturing company? No, no, that will all be part of Solar City. Give us a little bit of an update as to this installed base using the Solar City model. So, um, if you look at the, the history of the company, we, we continued to vertically integrate it. So, we started off with uh, sales and marketing, then we vertically integrated our installations. Then we uh, vertically integrated our financing. Then we vertically integrated our, our mounting hardware. And by doing it that way, we've been able to provide a, a cost structure um, that's the most competitive in the market space, and which allowed us to increase our market share. So the solar city way is vertical integration to reduce the cost of energy. So this is just the next phase in, in, our, in our evolution. Now, um, have you spoken to Elon Musk about this? I mean, what is his role in guiding the strategy of the company? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Elon was uh, very involved in this decision. Um, it, it comes down to simple math. So if you believe that at some point we have to get off fossil fuel, then you go, okay, 
it, we can't keep on burning fossil fuel. What are the steps that need to happen to get off fossil fuel? Uh, so if you, if you assume the goal is 40% by 2040 or 2050, whatever number you want to put in place, then you work backwards. What is the capacity needed to achieve that and what is the cost target needed to achieve that? So in order to achieve that number, we would have to do, the industry would have to deploy 400 gigawatts a year starting now. So, so we, we're significantly behind. Now the only reason why we aren't at that capacity is because that there's a, a cost curve that we need to meet. As you ramp up manufacturing, you cross that cost curve. Once you cross that cost curve, the market growth is essentially infinite in the next 30 to 40 years. Is there a specific date uh, at which that cross takes place? So, so the, the cross will occur every single year in different markets. So if you, if you look at the U.S., there's multiple different uh, cost of energy in, in every utility or every, every state. Right, like California, so as, right? For example, yeah, it's, 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 California would be a good example, right, Lyndon? Yes, yeah, so, so California would be one of the first markets that we cross down. So, so if you look at the, the things that we have to cross, the first step that we have to achieve is to pr provide the same solution that we provide today with a 10% federal tax credit instead of a 30% federal tax credit. We have to meet that deadline um, in 2017. So with the initial factory that we are going to be deploying, the, uh, the gigawatt factory, the, the one gigawatt factory, which is actually the, the initial small factory, uh, there will be larger to follow, we'll be able to hit that first cost curve of being able to provide the same product we provide today uh, with a 10% federal tax credit instead of a 30% federal tax credit. Then the next one, as we get more scale, is to do it with, with no uh, 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 tax incentives anywhere in the world. So, so then you have to start looking at other markets and going, can you deliver levelized cost of energy where there is no tax incentive, um, but you're just competing against uh, fossil fuel, different uh, forms of fossil fuel. And then you start going down the fossil fuel list. Um, you know, diesel is the easy one to knock out. And you start going down, eventually you get down to coal and natural gas. But if you start knocking them all out. So, so we'll cross the points many times over the next uh, five or ten years.